So you started a new job remotely. How do you build trust and confidence quickly? Stick around. Hello there, welcome to Work Tips Pro. This is where we help professionals like you stand out among their peers. My name is Mukhtar. So someone asked me this question and I thought, this is a good idea for a video. I've had to do this a lot of times, whether it's starting a new job, switching industries, or just meeting a client for the first time and then convincing them about the benefits of the solution that you're offering to them. And I'm gonna share with you a few things that have worked for me along the way. The first is FaceTime, and I mean this quite literally. Show your face as much as you can when you join a new job remotely, come on video. And I know it's not always convenient. Maybe someone decides to mess up your office space right before that important call, or you've just rolled out of bed and you don't want people to see that really awesome hairdo. So you see, the thing is that we convey a lot of information through facial expressions. People tend to trust you quicker when they see you. I've gone into interviews where people feel like they already know me from watching my videos and it just sets a positive tone for the rest of the interview. I've also noticed that when I'm working with another company, maybe like a consulting company, the people on my team tend to have a better connection with people that come on video. They tend to work better with them. And there's also this interesting experiment that I came across, I'm not sure exactly where, but the experiment goes something like this. There were college kids staying in a dorm. Now there were several rooms on multiple levels of this dormitory. The college kids staying in this dorm had to rank which kids were the most friendly and the most likable. Now guess what? The people that were staying by the stairs were rated as the most friendly and the most likable. That's because the stairs are a high traffic area. As a college kid in this experiment, if your room was by the stairs, you were getting as much face time as possible. So remember to show your face as much as you can. The next thing we're gonna talk about is one-on-ones. Now, one thing about working remotely is that you don't have those chanced encounters. You can't just bump into somebody in the hallway or in the cafeteria and have that really good conversation. One-on-ones are a way to help you with this, to help bridge this gap. It's not a perfect replacement by any means, but when you schedule one-on-ones with various people, you have that opportunity to build a relationship with them as opposed to just having a conversation with them in a meeting. And one-on-ones aren't just for your bosses or your reports. You can also have them laterally with your colleagues and they don't always have to last 30 minutes. They can be just 15 minutes. Now, what I would do is that I would schedule one-on-ones with various people and make it recurring. Now, I would also be very strategic and deliberate with how I do my one-on-ones because let's face it, you have very limited time. One thing that you can do is that you can have three categories of people, people that you must build a good relationship with, people that you should build a good relationship with, and people that it would be nice to have a good relationship with them. People in the must categories, these are people that you're gonna be working the most closely with, like your boss, your immediate team. People in the should category, these are people that might not be in your immediate team, but maybe they are in your department. And then people in the nice category, these are people that could be maybe in a different organization in another part of your company. This is just an example, so just do what makes sense to you. For people in the must category, you want to meet with them more often, maybe once a week, once in two weeks. For people in the should category, you want to meet with them less frequently than that, maybe every month, and so on and so forth. Another thing to keep in mind is that you want to look out for people that understand the history of the company, the politics in the company, and for people that have influence. Look for people with tenure in the company, people that also work cross-functionally. They tend to understand the politics a bit more. So remember to schedule your one-on-ones and make them recurring. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the little things. Little things like, oh, I'm gonna send you this link after this meeting. I'm gonna send you an email tomorrow. Little things like that, keep your word on those little things. When you don't, it slowly erodes the trust that people have in you. I'll tell you a quick story. A while ago, there was this client that we were working with. This project was trudging along because our leadership at the time didn't think that this client was a high priority client. So we had limited resources and the project was just moving along. Now, leadership was changed and the new leadership decided that this client was central to their strategy. This client became a high priority for them. What happened was that leadership decided to show up 
for a visit and just hear the client complain. Now, the client had a lot of things to complain about, but the leadership heard them and then went back. Leadership came back and paid another visit just to see how things were going. Our problems didn't entirely disappear, but the client's perception of the project changed just from those two visits. So the little things are very important. Now, one mistake that we make is that we tend to overestimate how much we can do in the future. We tend to think that we have a lot of time or we're going to have a lot of time in the future. So one thing that you can do is to under promise and then over deliver. That can help you with delivering and keeping your word on the little things. And I think that when you keep your word on the little things, it's going to translate to the bigger things. If you can keep your word on the little things, then the things of graver consequences, you are definitely going to keep your word on those things. The next thing we're going to talk about are quick wins. If you notice in certain countries when a new leader is elected to office, one of the very first things that they do is that they sign some executive orders. Now, I think it's because this is relatively easy and it yields result. It's a quick win. What's the big deal in signing an executive order? All you have to do is just flick your wrists and then things happen. I'm kidding. I'm sure it's a bit more complex than that. You flick your wrists and then you delegate. <laughs> Jokes aside, with your one-on-ones, you should get a sense of burning issues problem areas, your team and your boss's main priorities. And with this information, identify what are the quick wins that you can work on and that you can deliver. So for example, you see that your boss has a lot on her plate and you decide that I'm going to take one of the meetings that she runs so that I can free up some of her time. Or you see that your team has a process that needs to be optimized and you decide I'm going to take it on myself to optimize that process. And one thing that you need to keep in mind is that when you're new, you tend to have a fresh perspective. You can see things that the team might not necessarily see. So take advantage of that. So remember to identify and deliver quick wins. Now, if you want to be more effective in your meetings, click on the playlist that you're going to be seeing right now on your screen if you're watching this on YouTube. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. See you in the next video.